Who knows what these are? Cowrie shells. Yes. Do you know what they're for? Cowrie shells. Yes. So, do you know what they're for? Does anybody know what they're for? Well, for your neck and your hair. Earrings. You see this earring I made? Oh, the one cowrie shell. Oh, that's nice. Okay, thank you. Decoration. What are these? A belt. These are belts. <laughs> yes. Where else do I have cowrie shells? Oh, your hair. hair. My hair. Yes, yes. Let me tell you what cowrie shells mean. Do you know, up until maybe about 60, 70 years ago in the motherland, there, there, there were in other places in the world, this was used as wow. money. Mm -hmm. And it is or was traditional to give a lot of cowrie shells to a couple that was getting married because it was your way of saying that you wanted them to have a lot of children because it also means wealth and prosperity in the family too. I wear them because I want a lot of money. <laughs> Who wants to try it on the cowrie shell belt? We need some gold. <laughs> she pointed it too. Okay, hold up. I need some money too. <laughs> now, do you know, in ancient Kemet, women wore money belts. And the word for money and the money belt is shakir. Say that, shakir. Shakir. Right. Shakir. S-H-A-K-E-R. Shakir. Shakir. Right. That's money belt. But it also sounds like shake, right? Shake. Shake your money maker. That's right. This is also affiliated with dance because women would dance to earn money. To be a uh, dancer. <laughs> We got the right one. <laughs>
The idea, though, in having your head covered sometimes is to protect this part of your head because this is the most precious part of your head. Because in African tradition, it is believed that this is the part that connects you with your high ancestors and with your creator. Makes sense because it's up here, right? So uh, that's why the head is covered, and uh, that's also why you'll see a lot. Look, look, look at Baba. Sharp, he's goofy, right? Okay. Now we choose to wear them because they're stylish, okay? And they make us feel a certain way about reconnecting with our roots, yes? Okay. All right, now. This just looks like a piece of cloth. What's on it? Cowrie shells. shells, yes. Uh, but we want to turn this into a lapa. Lapa. Yes. And uh, would you rather see a skirt or a head wrap? Head wrap. Head wrap. Head wrap. Okay. Let's do oh. skirt. Head wrap. Skirt. Oh. We do oh. the oh. 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 Lapa's which one? So we go Lapa's the skirt. Lapa's the skirt. It's a wrap around. And the gale. The gale. A gale yes. is yes. Yeah. Uh, in in Kemetic tradition, it's called an ibes. 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 Okay. Head wrap. Head wrap. Head wrap. Do both. Do both. Do both. Do both. Do both. I don't have one. <laughs> and the person, yeah, right. the same person doesn't mind. Do the, do, you could do both. Do the head, then do the skirt. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do the same person. I'll do the same person. Her? No. Yeah, her. No. Show us about home. They poured it. Look at the kids. Oh, that's the kids. Right. Right. Okay, now, it's a lot of fabric, right? right. You generally, you will make a gay okay. leg. Or be best, you would need about two yards, okay, mm -hmm. or a little more if you want it to be piled even higher. You take this, you uh -huh. fold this in half, and because your head is small, I'm going to fold it one more time, okay? okay? Now I'm going to show you how to do two ways. First, you want to step in the You to the back of the head, around, around. I'm going to come down on an angle a little bit, and around, okay? You take this piece of sticking out right here, and you can just tuck it. Right up. Oops, let me go over to the side. So before you drop the old basic skirts and stuff, you could turn it into a head That's wrap. right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's one way. Now, oh, how about you? Take a walk down that way, okay? So That's like my life, girl. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Head wrap style. Okay. You know when you get out of the shower? Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 So this mm -hmm. it over. Oh yeah. Oh. This we can all hair. Oh. Again, basically, you just need two yards okay. of fabric. If you want to make a gay leg, I mean, I'm sorry, a, uh, a lapa, then you want to get the fabric so it'll go around your waist mm -hmm. and then you once, yeah. twice. Okay, and we tuck it. Yeah. Something sister made before. <laughs> okay. Arms up. Okay. All right. Hold it this way over here. Move it around. This way. Right. Like this. Okay. Tie it up. Right. Or you can have it in the back. Okay. I like it on the side. Right now, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Do you know how to take your dress? 
Okay. Yeah, take that jacket off. Or you tuck it down like that. Okay. All right. You go, girl. Walking, girl. Walk it, girl. Just by going to the bathroom. Just by going to the bathroom. Hold up, he was going Behind you. Right, yo. nice. It feels so nice. That is. You can get over that way. All right. Now, ask your question. She wanted to ask the question, Mother Queen. Queen Mother. Okay. You can keep these on until the end of the show. Okay. Just make sure you come back. <laughs> All the years I've been performing in schools, I was saying I have a vast repertoire, so I've been, I have a lot of information I've been sharing. A lot. But I only lost one outfit one time. Wow. Yeah, the bell rang and the little boy left with the outfit on. Wow. And yeah, I, it wasn't until I got home and it was I was quite some ways away that I got a phone call from the PTA saying we have your we have your clothes. <laughs> but that's not bad. I mean, I've been I've been doing performances at school since 1989, so it's not bad. I generally to get things back. Actually, question. Question. Um, what do you call a headband? A headband. <laughs> Oh my, there are a few different names. In, in the uh, comedic language, the word for bandolet. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Um, let me think on that, okay? Because there's so, so, so many. Uh, please remind me before you leave, okay? Yeah, because there are a lot of different words. If you, if you go to the, uh, um, if you go online and you look up uh, archive.org. You will find that there are versions of the Budge Dictionary in there. And you'll be able to use it for free in the search engine and so forth. There are a lot of mistakes in it. Which is why I really encourage people to learn the language and the culture so you are able to distinguish the various mistakes that are there. And, uh, in truth, he says in the very beginning of the dictionary, listen, who am I? You know, I'm just some English dude trying to interpret an African language, you know. I took a stab at it, here you go. So it's incumbent upon, incumbent upon us to learn it, to learn the truth. I mean, there are times I go to museums, and by the way, if you go to a museum to see our ancestors' stolen artifacts, go on a day where it's free, okay? Um, but I always read what's there, and a lot of times there are mistakes. It's good to know for yourself. Okay. How much time do I have? Well, we have to soon be out. What time is it? It's 3 o'clock. It's 3. Do I have time for one quick story? Yes. Okay. How many of you like storytelling? Like, right? Okay. See, my little hat in the phone. Um, you know, yeah, I'll end with strange. Um, so this is a real quick, short story. Uh, storytelling was used by our ancestors to be able to communicate to children what was expected of them in terms of behavior. How many of you have older people who talk to you all the time about how you should act? That's a good thing, okay? So that way you're not out, out in the world acting crazy. How many of you have seen people like that? Yeah, okay. Uh, during the time when our ancestors were uh, enslaved, storytelling took on a different kind of flavor because parents were separated from their children and uh, mothers especially were desperate to do anything that was necessary in terms of making sure that the child understood, don't even act up, don't give the mass a reason to sell you away. Not that that made a difference a lot of times, but still, <laughs> It was uh, at least one measure. At least don't let, don't let that be a leverage. So stories were told that would uh, scare children into being good. Uh, later, they became known as haunt tales, haunt or haunt tales, uh, or jump tales, because they would make you jump. You know, you hear a lot of them during Halloween. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I must tell you, I have a whole show full of hate tales because over the years, I found that my audience loves those scary stories. Mm -hmm. They're humorous, scary stories, and people just can't can't get enough of them. So, this is one of those, and uh, it is called Little Eight John. In fact, I bet you will find that story here in the library in the, the uh, storybook, The People Could Fly. How many of you have heard of The People Could Fly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of the stories that I do also. It is on my uh, uh, solstice spell. And um, in that book, there are a lot of different African-American folk tales. This is my version of Little H. John. Now, let me just tell you one more thing about storytellers. Every good storyteller finds a way to tell his or her own story in their way. Right. To rip off somebody else's version is just like if somebody were to cheat off, cheat off of you on the test. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everybody puts in the work to tell it with their own flavor. Right. So, this right. is my version right. of Little Eight John. There was a little boy who had just turned eight years old. And because of that, his mama started calling him Little Eight John. And since he was eight, she figured it was time to start telling him some of the very special ways of life. Uh. Little A. John was getting ready to go out in the woods, and his mama noticed that he had a bucket. Knew he was always messing around with frogs and toads. She said, son, let me just stop you before you leave this house. Let me tell you something. Don't you ever go stepping on no frogs and no toads, because you sure not going to bring some bad luck on this family. Oh, mama, I would never do anything like that. Oh, no. Hmm. As soon as his mama left, he ran out of the house, went to the woods with his bucket, got a whole mess of frogs and toads, and when it was all full, he picked up that bucket and turned it over, and he squashed the frogs, and he squashed the toads. <laughs> and sure enough, just like his mama said, bad luck came on the family. His baby sister got sick, his mama got sick, even the family dog got sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and little H.R., he just laughed and laughed and laughed. Because that's how mean little H.R. was. One day, little H.R.'s sitting in the room, feeling around with a chair. Little H.R.'s mama was watching him. Suddenly, she saw him turn that chair around, was getting ready to sit in, and she said, Oh, no, son. No, please don't sit in that chair backwards. Don't you know if you sit in chairs backwards, it brings bad luck on the family. You can't do that, son. Oh, mama. I'm sorry. I'll I, I never do that again. I swear. I promise. Mm. <laughs> as soon as his mama left the room, did little H. John go to that chair? He sat in it backwards. He went to every single chair in the house, turned around, sat in it backwards. And sure enough, just like his mama said, Bad luck came on the family. Mm -hmm. Now, his daddy was out plowing, minding his business with the mule, because they had a lot of land. Just minding his business, all of a sudden, that mule just stopped in his tracks. The late John's daddy went around to see what was the matter with that old mule. That mule kicked him square in the head. Little John's daddy was wobbling back to the house, and his mama was bandaging up his head, said, mm, the baby got sick, all these things happened, I don't understand what's going on around here, but little H. John, hmm, he sat on the back porch, and he laughed and laughed and laughed. That's how mean and nasty little H. John was. Little H. John was getting ready to go to bed. Got himself up all nice and comfortable on the bed, and then decided to flip himself around to sleep with his head at the foot of the bed. Little A. John's mama was walking by and said, oh, son, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't sleep with your head at the foot of the bed. If you do that, we will run out of money. Everything will just disappear. You can't do that. <laughs> oh, mama, I'll be good. As soon as his mama left, then little A. John turned around and sleep with his head at the foot of the bed. And just like his mama said, the family went stone broke. They had no money. In fact, they were at the store and were getting ready to pay for their groceries. And little A. John's daddy took out his wallet and watched the money just go poof, vanish right in front of his face. Mm -hmm. He said, what? 
Well, Little HR's mama said, I really don't know what's going on about, around here, but she took out her purse and all her money disappeared too. They went hungry for days because they needed those groceries. Little well, HR, he ran out in the woods. And he laughed, and laughed, and laughed. Because that's how mean, nasty, and evil Little HR was. One day, little eight times, mama figured out what was going on. She went to her son, she grabbed him, she looked at him, she said, look, I'm going to tell you one more thing, boy. Don't you ever, ever go get in the Sunday moans. Because you're going to bring around all raw head and bloody bones. And everybody knew that raw head and bloody bones, the bones of a dead person caught in the grave with all raw meat and blood dripping, hanging all off of them. Oh, oh, mama, please stop talking about raw head and bloody bones. I promise I'll be good. I won't get the Sunday bones. Please just stop talking about raw Please, please, please. As soon as Sunday rolled around, <laughs> little H. John jumped up out of bed and he ran the yard and he moved. Just like his mama said, raw headed bloody bones, he came up out of the grave. He stormed his way into little A. John's room. Little A. John was so shocked he couldn't even open his mouth. <laughs> raw headed bloody bones pointed a bloody finger at him and zap! Turned him into the nastiest little cockroach you ever want to see. <laughs> oh no. Oh, the next morning, Little eight times mama got up to make breakfast the way she usually did. And wasn't she ever so shocked to see this nasty little cockroach on her table? Oh no! She couldn't even hear a call out. <laughs> she went over and got the biggest thing she could find, which is a phone book about this thick, went over and said, <laughs> that was the end of little eight times. <laughs> say that's what happens to children who don't listen. <laughs> 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 I must tell you, years ago, I remember telling that story at a farm festival. These, these three children were sitting in the front. They were so bad. And they were cheering with every bad thing that little H.R. did. Until Raw Head and Bloody Bones showed up. Then all their faces went like this. And when I finished, the little girl said to me, That was a story, right? I was feeling a little playful. So I just said, Ask your daddy. <laughs> he said, no, that wasn't a story. <laughs> I'd like to leave you with this. We tell stories about our people, our traditions, our culture, how we think, what we believe, our history. Billie Holiday sang a song that dared to speak of the lynchings that took place in the South. And as Baba Zaid said, still takes place to this day. It was actually a white man who wrote the song because he had seen a photograph of a lynching and it haunted him for days. And Billie Holiday sang the song. It forever changed her career people started blackballing her because she dared to sing it. That means that she was not allowed to go different places. That means that people were not as quick to want to hire her because she sang about the truth. Southern trees, they're a strange fruit. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Black body swinging in the southern breeze. Oh, their strange fruit hanging 
on the poplar trees. Pastoral scene of the gallant sound, the bulging eyes and twisted mouth. The gentle scent of magnolia so sweet and fresh and the sudden smell of burning flesh. Here is the fruit for the crows to pluck, for the rain to gather, for the wind to stir. For the sun, for the sun to rot, for the tree to drop. Here is a strange and a bitter. Remember who you are. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.